So good afternoon, uh, friends. It's my pleasure and privilege uh, to welcome you all for this distinguished lecture series on uh, energy efficiency organized by CI Green Business Center. Uh, apart from uh, several of the other activities with the CI Green Business Center have been taking up, one of the newer initiatives which we have uh, started uh, is in terms of initiating this distinguished lecture series. The objective is to inspire and lead the Indian industry to achieve uh, world-class levels of uh, energy efficiency. So we are uh, starting the distinguished lecture series today. Uh, it will be in the format of a tech talk with about 20 to 30 minutes of uh, lecture by a very senior professional from the industry. And another unique thing which you have added is to have uh, a question and answer session for about 20 minutes so that the viewers are also able to share their knowledge as well as uh, ask for additional information from the, uh, from the speaker. So all the lectures would be made available permanently for possibility in the endeavor. Uh, this will be like a, a TED talk, which is available always for all of us to view uh, further if you miss one of them. So we will have uh, this talk on the first Monday between 4 and 5 p.m. Uh, in, the, in the months to come. Every month we will have one uh, distinguished lecture seat, uh, talk between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. on the first Monday of, uh, of every month. Having said that, uh, uh, we will go to the, 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 the first lecture uh, which is going to happen today. Uh, Kapil Dev once said uh, uh, that he is privileged to demonstrate his commitment as a captain because he has an opportunity of leading the, uh, the, the team by bowling first. Similarly, uh, we have uh, our chairman, Mr. Ravi Chandran, who has offered uh, uh, to be the first speaker of this uh, distinguished uh, uh, lecture series. Mr. Ravi Chandran is the chairman of uh, Energy Efficiency Council of uh, the Green Business Center. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ravi, for uh, agreeing to be the first speaker for uh, this distinguished lecture series. Uh, Mr. Ravi Chandran Pumushwathaman is the president of uh, uh, Danfoss. He has been uh, leading Danfoss in India for the last uh, seven to eight years of time. He has experience of more than 30 years in areas of uh, electrical and, uh, and uh, energy efficiency. <coughs> Apart from all that uh, which you see uh, uh, in the data of Mr. Ravichan Pushotaman, he is uh, a person who is practicing extensively energy efficiency in the factory, in the manufacturing factories which are under uh, his direct control. And secondly, he is one of the uh, most uh, well-known speakers in, uh, on energy efficiency in the, in the entire country. And thirdly, he has another unique distinction of being a person who is involved with a company which is uh, supplying energy efficient equipment which is helping the larger Indian industry to become more and more energy efficient. And lastly, uh, Mr. Ravi Chandran is also involved in uh, promoting more and more innovations by being a mentor to several of the startups uh, in the areas of clean tech and uh, energy efficiency. We are extremely honored and privileged to have such a distinguished person, a person uh, who, has, uh, uh, who has extraordinary experience in, in the subject which he is going to talk about. Uh, to open the distinguished lecture series on energy efficiency. Uh, without uh, much further ado, uh, may I request uh, Mr. Ravi Chandran to take over and deliver his lecture, please. Uh, Mr. Ravi, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Venkatagiri, and uh, thank you, Kiran. Uh, greetings and good evening uh, to everyone on this uh, first seminar organized by CII GBC. Um, I think I have to confess, uh, Venkatagiri, I'm actually in a green zone, but in a red city. Uh, so I, I, I'm not really sitting in a green building as probably you are sitting actually, uh, but I'm really looking forward to this, uh, this conversation this afternoon. And I hope uh, all of you on the call are uh, staying safe and uh, keeping up the fighting spirits, uh, you know, during this uh, crisis. Uh, I think at an outset, uh, let me on behalf of CII and also GBC and the Energy Efficiency Council, uh, thank all the energy warriors uh, who have been keeping this country uh, tickling for many, many weeks actually. Um, at hospitals, at grids, at uh, power stations, uh, at data centers and many more. And also ensuring that a stable grid while the nation switched off uh, lights to thank uh, the Corona warriors. I think we thank each and every energy champion. And I think this is really a remarkable thing that we have, uh, you know, experienced uh, in the last few weeks. Uh, 
Now, I think moving on to this topic, uh, you know, first let me congratulate CII GPC for bringing up this novel idea uh, for a monthly uh, series of energy efficiency talk. Um, I think where we probably will get a chance to uh, listen in to thought leaders who would probably share a lot uh, about the energy efficiency and the potential it offers for India. I think I'm very glad to start the topic uh, as the chair of the uh, council and also really look forward to uh, today's engaging and uh, stimulating session and also in the forthcoming months ahead. I think we all are, I think, uh, collectively responsible for reshaping the country. And in fact, uh, we all need to guide this country into a new path when we return to a new normal. Um, I think as regards to the topic today, I think the format that I have chosen is that uh, I have been requested to share my thoughts for about 20, 25 minutes. And uh, then I would probably have uh, Kiran help me out with uh, the Q&A session. Um, before I uh, start, I will just kind of share my, uh, my computer because I'm going to be led by a few slides which I put together as uh, I hope uh, you can see the slides, yeah? Yes, sir, we can see. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, um, I mean, when we look at uh, where are we today in the world, I mean, uh, these are really uh, very testing times for uh, all of us. I think uh, the world is in lockdown. I think COVID-19 pandemic uh, has massively disrupted the global economy, uh, forcing large parts of uh, the world into confinement and also creating largest shocks to global energy system, which we haven't witnessed for more than 70 years, seven decades actually. I think it is estimated um, as recently as uh, last week that the global energy demand has declined by 6% actually. And I think uh, one of the telling aspects of this pandemic is that the fall compared to 2008 is actually seven times greater. So this is, this is a much bigger crisis we have on the energy side as well. But I think there are also, uh, you know, seen some learnings out of what we have uh, experienced the last few weeks and there's also some positive stories that are unfolding from the lockdown while many of the economies especially service economies they have seen a huge drop coal oil and gas i think the demand has probably fallen between six to eight percent but there's a good news and the good news really is that the renewables are holding up and I think they haven't really seen the drop actually. And when the whole world was under lockdown, I think the renewables were more or less contributing to 40% of the energy demand across the world. So I think this is a very, very positive story for us when we kind of look back at where we want to head in the future as well. And as many of you may be aware, even in India, we have seen, you know, at least where I am living in Chennai, I'm able to see more birds. I'm able to see, uh, you know, far more activity in the sky, even though the planes are not flying. So it kind of tells that, you know, nature is healing. And I think uh, someone uh, sent me a WhatsApp from Delhi that they could even see Himalayas from Jalandhar. It's, it's, it's kind of very clear that there is a correlation between climate change and energy. And I think this is exactly what uh, I wanted to uh, uh, share here. Um, I think as companies and countries plan revival, the question in everyone's mind, what is the priority for us? The obvious is, of course, people's safety and how do we ensure that everybody's jobs are saved? The other thing is about the, while the energy production has decreased, I think the focus on energy efficiency and energy productivity is only going to increase because these are two important ingredients for cash flows for business and for economies. Another visible aspect during the lockdown, you know, I think in my own learning is that uh, 
there are technologies that are kind of unfolding which people are willing to experiment as well so these are all very very positive for us but i think it's also critical for us to understand how can we solve the twin challenges which lies in front of us how can we solve them in a manner that we take care of both the challenges which is in terms of economic recovery post the lockdown and also the recovery that brings in a higher environmental resilience i think this is something we need a fine balance and this is exactly one of the learnings we have also from the covid experience so i think if there is a battle of the species we need to win this and live another day another year maybe another century and for that to me energy efficiency and sustainability has a very pivotal role in not only helping us navigate where we are but i also believe that we can make a great living out of this opportunity i think when you look into india my computer seems to be stuck here so yeah so when you when you look into india what you see here is a graph of uh, the drop in different uh, countries and you know when the world was under lockdown uh, while many governments wanted to uh, flatten the curve and primarily as many of you may know flattening is more like uh, postponing the problem because uh, the only vaccine that we all know is uh, only one thing available is uh, the drug and the vaccines are really far away but the one little vaccine that we have is social distancing and uh, given the the kind of wave the uh, a uh, pandemic has been hitting us in different parts of the world i think we have seen different learnings from the lockdown as well and when it comes to india i think i want to share with you some numbers that were put out very recently i think we have uh, roughly about 400 gigawatts of installed capacity in india and uh, i think in lockdown 2.0 we were almost like 25% down but i think another important thing we need to recognize is that close to 100 gigawatts on top of the 400 gigawatts was some of the machines that went silent which was the diesel generating sets actually so this clearly kind of gives us you know the spectrum of where we are we also believe that in the last 2 to 3 weeks we kind of see that there is a huge increase in the demand for residential of course residential is is something which uh, quite a bit of uh, change would going to happen in the future but i also believe the bandwidth and the internet service providers are working tirelessly to keep the internet working at residential places actually i think these are all you know some things which we need to be cognizant of when we kind of relook at how we want to evolve in the future now i know some time back uh, the bureau of energy efficiency um, i think uh, they've done a remarkable work having said that i think we need to acknowledge the fact that this country has made remarkable progress the last two decades ever since uh, you know the the the, the energy, the energy uh, efficiency program was started uh, in the in the late 90s i think if you look at uh, what as a country we have achieved and also i think gbc is and uh, you know epitomizes the kind of work that they have been doing here i think we have the finest cement plants the most energy efficient cement plants in in the world actually today so i think on one side we really have done pretty well uh, in some sectors but that also gives me hope that, that this pandemic is going to be a huge opportunity for us and when we come out of this i have some thoughts of how we can reshape the indian energy space as well um, when I, when i look at we have a robust plan in place from from bee uh, but i think one of the things if you see here that the world is offering us today i got a little bit inspired about what's happening on the regulatory side today actually i think electricity is is very closely related to a lot of regulatory stuff uh, as far as most nations are concerned but i also this is the time where actually we can push the regulator to a level where they can give us huge amount of space to deploy more and more technology actually and when you look at these uh, the road map that we has placed in front of us i think decarbonization drive is one of the prime movers of this whole transformation that they're looking at the 1.5 degree uh, reduction in temperature and the climate change 
decentralization i think uh, we we are probably moving more and more into decentral uh, electricity uh, we are looking at more and more disruptive innovations uh, especially that would come using uh, technologies like ai uh, blockchain uh, you know uh, digital twins um, i'm going to talk about some few examples of what that can help us both in buildings as well as in industry and of course how do we relentlessly focus on on efficiency i think we are all moving to a world i think in my view uh, where you know the definition of who is a producer and who is a consumer is getting merged actually because a home can be also a producer uh, you know an industry can also be a producer an individual also can be a producer i think so we need to recognize these facts you know uh, but i think we have a very solid plan and and when i was kind of going through this uh, plan uh, uh, i i felt that you know b has really provided us a great cafeteria of options but the question is uh, should we wait for 2027 or should we look at fast forwarding them actually and in my view i strongly believe that this is an opportunity where you know like uh, like they say in the midst of every crisis there lies an opportunity and i think uh, what corona has done to these plans to me as i see it we will see some of these plans being probably advanced in the next 3 to 5 years so proliferation of uh, energy and energy efficiency centric solutions will be hastened because i'm sure the the opportunity that companies are going to be faced with in the future is going to be only solved through these kind of of initiatives look at edge computing i mean today you can run hospital from a cloud actually so i think this is going to be something which will inspire even the energy space going forward and that's where i believe that technology and also the opportunity that we have right now kind of should be you know utilized for rebuilding the future so what i have done is i've kind of put together some thoughts of uh, how should we uh, look ahead outside uh, when we come out of this crisis uh, uh, this is a kind of a, a recipe that i have uh, where i think uh, the pivotal role of course is uh, with the government um, and of course the regulator as part of it uh, but i think there are four key stakeholders here because uh, you know when we get out of this crisis uh, uh, energy would be very different from what we have seen in the past in my view so let me start with uh, the first one which is uh, the government i think we are due for a new electricity act um, i say this for two reasons one i think the technology and the proliferation of technology in the energy industry requires a huge revamp of the infrastructure you know be it uh, an energy meter or be it an equipment in a factory or a building and i think we are seeing more and more software is eating into most of our spaces and i think technology is becoming a resource liberating force i think uh, we've already seen uh, eesl has demonstrated that you know in terms of an led bulb so i think we really need to look at how can we use the electricity act to help us actually uh, take advantage of technology i think the second important thing is that uh, we need to look at is that i think today we are seeing more and more prosumers coming in the last 5 years in the in the economy um, so we kind of have an electricity act uh, where you have the federal mechanism but we also need to look at how do you promote more and more prosumers who are also producers and who are more consumers i think if we take that path in my view we are going to see huge amount of opportunities for carbon neutrality and i think that's the only way we can look forward and kind of disrupt some of the challenges that we have when it comes to sustainability goals actually the second the biggest initiative in the government uh, should uh, you know look at is that when they come out the stimulus program and in my view we should take the lesson from what the us did in 2008 actually when us came out of the financial crisis they used energy efficiency stimulus programs which kind of created more than 200000 jobs and they also came up with funding to deploy newer technologies so i think you know when government is looking at stimulus in the future uh, this should be one of the important uh, impediments that we need to take advantage of the third is if you look at the building codes i mean we've always had this challenge in deployment of building codes but i think in the pandemic pandemic situation we have seen how collaborative you know the central governments and the state governments have been in tackling covid and i think this is also a good example of how we can leverage these kind of collaborative initiatives 
and, and look at how do we deploy building codes, which has been a significant challenge in the states, uh, even though the regulatory bodies are sitting in the central side. I mean, deploying this is also very important because this is the only way we can, we can get more energy productivity out of our assets and out of our, our infrastructure and, and look at how do we build sustainable cities for the future. So I think, finally, of course, sometime by 2030, 2035, we should look at how do we move uh, our economy and what kind of policy initiatives that will be propelled on the circular economy. Because one of the challenges we have also seen with, with the pandemic is that there's going to be a lot of waste generation that is happening. And how do we make sure that this whole circular economy, you know, long-term sustainability is also becoming a very important thing, given the, the kind of viruses we have seen and, and there's no, no guarantee that we are not going to see future viruses. So therefore, we need to look at how we can evolve as a nation towards a circular economy and also keep the cost you know, at an affordable level for all parts of the society, actually. So I think these are three or four of my very, very high uh, uh, themes uh, uh, when it comes to uh, the government. Now, let me pick on uh, uh, what, what should we do in driving and accelerating digital, uh, deep digital decarbonization. I think social distancing, um, you know, I'm running a supply chain sitting in Chennai, Baroda and, and Pune, and we clearly have seen that we are not able to restart. And it's last two weeks we have been working on redesigning our shop floor, redesigning our supply chain. We have to provide the one and a half feet, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, one and a half meter kind of distance between two workstations. Uh, and I think the whole redesigning due to social distancing, because social distancing is going to be staying here for next three to five years at least. I'm not very optimistic that we all will be having a drug or a vaccine. Therefore, how do we take, uh, you know, um, when we do this, how do we actually also, uh, you know, dovetail uh, energy efficiency is, is something we need to think about because you are going to have a challenge with energy productivity when you redesign the building. Sir. The other thing is, uh, I, sometimes when I look at the, the number of hotels we have, uh, and, and given the fact that, that, that there are going to be less people traveling, um, and some of the social distancing has limitations for a mall or a hotel, um, you know, we also need to redesign these buildings for, for meaningful purposes. Maybe they become future hospitals, or maybe they become quarantine centers, or what do I know? I mean, these are things where we will have to really, uh, you know, how, how to make the churn on asset utilization. So when we get into that, I think potentially what we should do is we should look at how do we keep the energy uh, productivity under focus because otherwise we run into the risk of uh, an increasing demand on, 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 on lesser space actually. So that's, that's something where I feel that a lot would be driven into that, that, that dimension. I think the second is, uh, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a very big uh, fan of a digital twin actually. And, and, and when I talk about digital twin, I think it's not really the, the industry part, but also on the building information modeling, actually. Now, when you look at building information modeling, um, you know, you take any existing building um, and compare it with an idealistic building and look at what are the potential opportunities we have. The entire building can be run from a cloud. So you really don't need anyone present in the building, actually. Given the technologies that we are having today, and, and as an example, I gave you that how you, if the Niti Aayog and the government of India can give you an approval for telemedicine at a stroke of uh, four days, I think we have a great opportunity to move a lot of our buildings to cloud control. And, and, and we can actually do this smartly and take full advantage of decarbonization because you know we will kind of get layer by layer, we can peel the onion and really improve the energy efficiency of, of a building. So is the case with, uh, with any industry, actually. I mean, whether it's a, it's a future industry, a pharmaceutical industry, or an FMCG industry, I think uh, the digital twin, I mean, when you can apply a digital twin on a, on a chilling equipment or a chiller in a hotel, we can also apply it on a large factory. So I, I believe uh, in the immediate future, a technology like, uh, you know, like uh, blockchain, AR, VR, uh, analytics, um, data science, all of this is only going to um, help us more and more move more things into the cloud actually. And I think India has a very unique position where we have a very strong IT skill sets, a combination of domain expertise that is sitting in the energy sector. If we can actually promote more and more of this collaborative effort I think we will have a great opportunity to take full advantage of 
you know, decarbonizing our buildings. And I think we can be a big leader in this space globally. And tomorrow we could also export a lot of technologies out of India. I think on the other part in the industries, I think sustainability, uh, waste and water becomes an important uh, topic. I mean, on one side, uh, there is a lot of expectation that we have to look at uh, getting attractive to supply chains that can get disrupted and move from China to India. But I think one of the things where Vietnam scores over India is the availability of fresh water, actually. And water has been a massive challenge for us across uh, probably the 80 cities of India. So we really need to build uh, sustainable technologies where you know we can uh, protect ourselves against water. And, and this is an area where we have not really focused on. And I think uh, for me, energy and water, you know, uh, they have very strong correlation and therefore we need to look at how do we save water and how do we protect ourselves. And unless we do that, we are not going to attract, uh, you know, long-term supply chains uh, coming to India. Moving on a little bit into individuals, I see residential uh, 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 changes going to be dramatic in the next three to five years. Uh, given the fact that the 5G will become the umbilical cord of the Indian economy, um, you will probably not have a difference whether you're sitting in the remotest part of India or whether you're sitting in a major urban city, actually. Uh, already work from home, you might have seen many companies uh, are trying to move, many of their employees work from home. So homes need to become smarter. And I'm also, I'm also believing that there is going to be a Netflix moment for energy in the homes. What I mean by that is with, with, the, with the metering available, digital metering available, you will be as a consumer able to pick what kind of electricity you want at what points in time and when do you want to start your air conditioner, when do you want to start your washing machine. I think this is not far away. In my view, I can see it happening in the next two, two to three years actually. So I believe India is ripe and India's moment of Netflix in energy is already there at our doorsteps. We need to encash that and this is the right moment in my view actually. We've also, also seen that, you know, cloud to home solutions are emerging and, and, and many homes are becoming uh, producers of, of uh, renewable energy. So I think this is going to be a huge market. Uh, and, and I think given the fact that, uh, you know, currently the discounts are under huge stress, uh, how we address that is one part. But I think when we evolve out of this crisis, I think you will see a new breed of discounts who will not only capture value, but also try to consolidate and, and build value around uh, consumers and, and make this even more attractive in the, in the next 10, 15 years, actually. The last two, <coughs> the last two parts I wanted to share uh, is on the mobility part. You know, I believe, um, you know, electrification is the key. And uh, I think electrification, uh, especially even in construction industry, is going to be a big game changer. And, and that's something which already is going to propel. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of lithium ion, uh, given the fact that lithium ion, uh, even though it is uh, 10 times uh, lower in the last what, five years, we've seen a drop in prices. I believe we need very strong R&D to look at all our uh, different uh, other options like flow batteries and, and chemical storage batteries and, and kind of options actually. Um, I'm very bullish on hydrogen as an alternative fuel, both in mobility and even uh, probably in uh, using in large uh, uh, storage plants uh, or EV plants that might uh, uh, be an opportunity for us. Uh, so these are all, uh, you know, we have to leapfrog as India. And I think we have a huge research potential here as well. And that's also what I felt that government should proliferate more R&D actually. I mean, you look at after World War II, what Germans did uh, to the automotive industry. And I think we have a great opportunity to do that now for the energy sector. If we can only encash this opportunity, I think, you know, it's a great moment for us in my view, actually. Lastly, moving on to agriculture. I think, uh, you know, food security is a big question. Um, and, and I think this is something we would all have, have uh, you know, realized in the last uh, four or five weeks. Uh, um, and, and, you know, we have more than 120 million people stranded on the, on the different parts of the city. But I also believe that, uh, you know, when we try to address food security, when we try to address food waste and food loss, uh, the energy footprint is going to expand. And, 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 and I think one of the areas where we all need to be aware of it is that in the sustainability challenge that we have on climate change, methane is an underspoken, underestimated part of the, of the polluter. 
and and you know um, the milk industry is the lar largest methane polluter in, in in the universe actually so how do we address this is something we need to think about it actually because this is another area where you know we need to be aware of that india's fresh water are actually being used today to grow rice paddy and wheat and sugar and and probably you know all of that we ended up with a lot of diabetics and you know diabetes is also one of the big challenges for covid 19 actually so people would make future choices of what they want to eat uh, and when they want to eat and how they want to eat and all of this is going to put a huge stress on the energy footprint of this country actually uh, fresh water i have already said some examples actually we need to look at how do we use uh, or redirect the fresh water uh, to better usage and and better deployment of that and then i think the lastly what we are going to see in agriculture is that you know we, we have done remarkably well with uh, the enam markets in the last four weeks <clears throat> i think the electronic uh, uh, national agriculture markets uh, um, you know more than uh, doubled in the last five weeks actually sometimes i wonder you know we in india do better in crisis actually and i think we should not wait for another crisis when it comes to uh, you know agriculture e-commerce i think this is going to stay and you are going to see propelling growth in e-commerce over the next 4 or 5 years in my view and all of this is going to drive the capacities for warehouses and cold rooms actually one of the biggest challenges that we see today i mean even in uh, in uh, in curbing the pandemic is uh, our vegetable markets uh, be it uh, be it uh, in maharashtra be it in delhi be it in chennai most of the vegetable markets that we have here uh, they need to be reformed actually and and i don't see i'm a i'm a, I'm a strong uh, 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 a person who would prefer to do uh, pack houses in the farm end i know it may put a different uh, structure on the energy footprint but remember that you know we have micro grid opportunity with solar and you can get into some kind of a zoning uh, a category for these kind of agriculture uh, uh, areas where you don't have electricity and allow agriculture to zone and use alternative technologies like microgrids actually so all in all i think uh, you know there is great work to be done and i'm very optimistic of the future and i think the uh, uh, as we come out of this crisis you know i believe uh, india must not use this crisis and i think we will kind of reinvent ourselves as a nation and we have a great opportunity in my view i think i will kind of stop here um, and uh, you know i still believe uh, before i conclude you know energy efficiency can only boost economies quickly and if we actually embrace it the post crisis it will only having it will only have a long lasting benefits for the country for the companies for the individuals so i'll stop here and maybe uh, look at kiran uh, to take some questions Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That was an excellent address.